Hello and welcome to a new episode of the John Q Podcast, where we talk about all things related to pickleball gear and technology. I'm joined again by my good friend, Eddie. Eddie, how are you doing, buddy? Let's do a podcast, John. Let's do another one. All right. We're on episode 16. 16. Can okay. you believe it? You just keep creeping just up rolling. and up and up. Eddie, how was your week this past week? Another crazy one, John. We had uh, a three-and-a-half-day weekend. No, yeah, three-and-a-half-day weekend. Yep. Had some out-of-town guests come in mm -hmm. from uh, North Carolina, good friends who live in the Outer Banks, so they want a little mountain time being at zero feet sea level. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you take them? So we went hiking. They're big hikers, and, uh, you know, they don't get elevation very much, so mm -hmm. just uh, up in the foothills here in the Rockies. Did you go to, like, a state park or... Yeah, we did uh, El Dorado Canyon State Park, which is a good just one. amazing. Yeah. In any other state, that would be a just a full blown national park, I think. <laughs> right. um, but then the um, you know the Chautauqua Park mm -hmm. in Boulder. Yeah, and then uh, out to Ned. Right. So uh, yeah, kind of tour the local trails. Yeah, I'm sure they enjoyed it. You know, I, I did a archaeology job. I did a survey for the Colorado State Parks for seven of the. State parks, and before that, I'd been to maybe one or two. I had no idea how many there are right here in the Front Range. And Amazing, yeah, they're all just spectacular. El Dorado, in particular, mm -hmm. is if you're a rock climber, it's like the mecca of rock climbing. They probably have hundred, four hundred trails, right? Or not trails, but routes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the rock, and it's just world class climbing. Yeah, not something I do, but it's fun to watch. I am not a climber either, <laughs> which is odd. Just one of those things I like. You my, got long arms and legs. You'd probably be really good at it. My personality profile fits it. You know, I love outdoors. I love yeah, all the sporty a. things. And but I do not like rock climbing. I is think it, it goes back to the first time I went rappelling yeah. was with one of my friends back when I was an undergraduate. We went out to this trail. I was I was in. I was in Missouri at the school. We went out to a trail in Arkansas at the Ozark Highlands Trail, and it had a cliff. So we hiked in with all of the ropes and the rappelling gear, and, and he was so excited when we got to the top. He was like, all right, here's how you do it. He, he put it on himself, and he put the rope through this way and right. make it that way, and he yeah. rappelled down. And then I was like, I oh, put the rope in that way. <laughs> I think I got it right. And I was like backing down, and the, the rope kind of gave, and then it, then it caught. And I had it wrong, and it was just, like, locked. And I was just hanging there for, like, 10 minutes trying to— Oh, my God. Like, a third of the way down trying to get—it was pretty horrifying. And <laughs> ever since then, I've had a few bad experiences that with, with climbing. ultimate worst rock climbing <laughs> instruction ever. <laughs> he was not an instructor. He was just a pal of mine, and, and he just got too excited. And, uh, yeah, oh, so. my goodness. But, but yeah, so good you? to know that you took your friends out and saw some of— Colorado's front range beauty. Yeah, it's amazing that we live in a place where people spend a lot of money to vacation. And we could just drive 20 minutes outside our back door and be in that place. It's incredible, really. Yeah, it is. I, I keep telling my kids, I'm like, you grew up here, but you don't understand what it's like <laughs> to live in some other place right. that's not nearly as beautiful. And then you, you drive in, you see the beautiful mountains and snow caps and everything else. So I live in a cul-de-sac, and I'm kind of at the bottom end. Mm -hmm. So every day I get to walk up to the top of the, the street to check mm -hmm. the mail, and Long's Peak is there, mm -hmm. and the Indian Peaks are there, you know, 13, 14,000 yeah. mountains. It's gorgeous. It is amazing. We are privileged to live in this place. Except for pickleball, because the <laughs> high <Land>. altitude makes <laughs> the balls, like, everything goes out. It's, 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 training at high altitude has its perks, though. It once you go down to sea level, you're like, like oh, Superman. all my balls are going in. <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't do much. So we, my, my middle kid, Alec, went camping with his friend, Ashlyn, and they went up to uh, Winter Park and with her parents and a okay. camper and camp. So I just had Charlie and we just hung out at home. We did a bunch of, you know, just walking around the neighborhood and some, we played badminton in the backyard. We went to the oh, dollar no. store and got these dollar badminton rackets and the birdie and, uh, it's a lot of fun swinging those things. It is. Once you get used to the the, the length, you know, the, of the racket compared to a pickleball paddle, you can really get some torque on those with your wrists. Do and, those jump spikes? Uh huh. Yeah. Nice. Just yeah. Smash it into your kid's face. <laughs> <laughs> it was so windy. <laughs> we were just playing like with each other. We were standing side by side. I would spike it, and it would fly, and then come back, and he would spike it, and it would fly and come back. It was just like oh. hitting against a wall. That's how bad <laughs> the wind was. Oh, speaking of which, I for the first time I did disc golf oh nice 
You know what that is, right? Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, our visitors, uh, when they weren't hiking, he took me out disc golfing. That's kind of his thing. Uh-huh. I'm like, well, heck, I'll try it. So uh, I went on Amazon, bought the bought a, the cheapest thing I could find, <laughs> right. and we went out to this course not too far from here. Mm-hmm. Man, that was fun. It's a lot of fun. It was a good time. I was terrible at it. You know, every, all of my discs were like straight, 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 and then <laughs> off to the left. But uh, once I got the hang of it, uh-huh. it, was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it a few times. I got a buddy that's really into it also. He's as into it as I am pickleball. And I can see why. You know, you can you can certainly dive deep into disc golf. Yeah. So when we get sick of this, we'll we'll start a disc golf it's, podcast. It's already in the works, buddy. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, let's jump into the latest news. Uh, the big news that hit just today is that uh, Andre Dehascu actually got fined and suspended for the whole pine tar incident. Uh, so the UPA, this new organization, kind of announced a couple of weeks ago that coincided with with Yola's delisting from the approved paddle list, the new Gen 3s, the UPA, the United Pickleball Association, released the statement today, and, and it says – that on May 11th, 2024, during MLP Atlanta, the testing process conducted by our independent lab partners, Pickle Pro Labs, detected a foreign substance on the paddle submitted to be used for play by Andre Diascu of the Arizona Drive. The paddle was sent in for further testing, and the results have come back confirming an illegal substance. At no point was the paddle in question used during competition in Atlanta. So that's mm. interesting. He was not, not mm-hmm. using it yet. Just brought it to use it. Diaskew has acknowledged the paddle surface has been manipulated. UPA has zero tolerance for such tolerance for such action, regardless of the circumstances, and has taken it taken swift action. As a result, Diaskew has been suspended from all UPA sanctioned competition. So that would be the PPA tour and the MLP events for sixty days from the completion of the PPA tour busy Atlanta Open. Fined fifty thousand dollars. And placed on probation for a year. Fifty thousand dollars. That is some serious. For fun. pickleball, that's huge. Yes, that's that's huge. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of. I think they're kind of setting a standard for themselves right right out of the gate. They've they've got the situation that landed in their lap. It wasn't really a difficult decision. I mean, the the right. the fines themselves are are interesting, but to do it or not do it, I think is pretty hundred uh, percent. Right, got to do it. Yeah, and you know. I don't know what happened. It, it looks horrible for Andre, for sure. I, I do like the guy. He's, he's always been seemingly very upstanding and, and a very ethical character. Um, but, you know, he brought a paddle with pine tar on it. Well, it sounds <laughs> like he's not arguing any of it. He's not yeah, saying it wasn't me. Somebody right. did something to my bag, whatever. And, I mean, none yeah. of that's come up. At least he's fessed up. He's, yeah. Yeah. So to his credit, he was like, yeah, okay. It kind of goes in the bucket of what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Why? As if that's not a, a readily apparent. It's not like a corked bat, right? Right. You, you'd think. It's right there front and center. You know, a paddle dripping with <laughs> sap that <laughs> smells like a pine tree is going to be a dead giveaway. I mean, he could have said, like, he was at Waffle House earlier and it's actually <laughs> maple syrup. Or, right. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, oh, my God. It's bizarre. It's so bizarre. What Do you know what country he's from? Some, like, Eastern European yeah, country, I, I don't think. Know. Maybe pine tars. Maybe it's like a ritualistic thing. <laughs> Rubbing his paddle with pine tars. Presumably it's for what? For more spin? Yeah, you would imagine. For and he's got one of the spinniest paddles out there. Yeah. Nor does he struggle creating spin. No. So why? Yeah. What a, what a, what a silly thing. That's a, it's unfortunate. But, I mean, that, I think that's – I, I don't want to message. comment on the, on the fine. That seems, you know – but that's not my judgment. It seems pretty pretty harsh, but probably appropriate for that infraction. I mean, certainly now that this sets a precedent, people are going to think about think twice about modifying their paddles. I don't think we're going to see any such mm-hmm. shenanigans for a while. Who knows, though? <laughs> Every time I, I make a judgment like that, I get proven wrong. So that's pretty much he's out for 60 days. I mean, there's really no other type of event that he would. No, and, and I even heard that APP declined him. Right. And that was before this news came out. Okay. So he's got nothing, man. Could be a career ender. Yeah. I mean, I hope not. I really like Andre. He's, he's been surging in his performance over the past couple of years. And it would be a shame to see that talent go away. Uh, but I think he'll be back. 
maybe maybe you'll take those 60 days as half sabbatical, half rehabilitation training and come back stronger than ever. Let's hope so. Yeah. But very interesting news, though. I mean, talk about a, a line in the sand. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right out the box, the UPA is on top of it. Yeah. I mean, they had an opportunity and they took it. Yep. Uh, I mean, if they didn't do that, they would be questionable. You know, it, they would have a questionable role in pickleball, you know. Here's this mm-hmm. new organization. We have somebody bending the rules or breaking the rules, you know, yeah. and they did nothing. So I think that was smart on their point, on their part to to do what they did. But we amateurs, we're still good to go, right? Oh, I've got pine tar <laughs> dripping. I just I have a, a barrel of pine tar on my way out of the house. I just dip you know my what? paddle in it. <laughs> I went to Costco earlier and they were all sold <laughs> like out. <laughs> you, you didn't get the barrel of pine tar? No. Dang, Dang it. it. John? <laughs> Oh, well, I have to borrow some of your stash again. Well, you you had a, a great idea, another one of these bready, <laughs> bready, Eddie brainstorms. <laughs> so uh, to you and I trick out a paddle. We create a Frankenstein paddle. and Oh, I've got so many ideas. Oh, me too. You're so. dead. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely bring it, dead. Bring it. So, yeah. Um, that's going to be fun. out the window, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've got this uh, – I used to have this for my skateboards, longboards. You could put – uh, this grip on it. And it wasn't grip tape. It was this, it wasn't spray on either. It's like this lacquer you get in a bucket that has grit in it. It's like a, it's like epoxy and with grit and it's just gritty as all can be. So right. I figured it might be too heavy. We'll see. That's going to be the, I'll try that. But I'm also really interested in well, we should make a pine tar paddle just in honor of you do you. This whole I'm going to do mine, and we will compare notes at <laughs> the gave, end of the day. Right. I, gave, I gave you one of my ideas. Let's hear one of yours. <laughs> well, we need to talk about like what's on the table and what's off the mm-hmm. table for this this competition, and maybe some of our audience can chime in as to what ideas they might have. But are, are we allowed to mess with things like paddle dimensions and Ooh, materials yes. and that kind of thing? I, I like it. And I like the idea of polling the audience on this too. Okay. I'm picturing you coming out with like a <laughs> inspector gadget paddle. You press a button <laughs> and an arm shoots out and Ernie's the ball. You know, ATP. I used to work for NASA, as did, you know, Mark Rober, and he exactly. created lots of crazy things. So I might have to enlist him or. If you can get Mark Rober on the podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's something in it for me. Let's go. All right. That would be fantastic. I think we need to work on our projects and. Get out there on the court. Yeah. This is going to be fun. That's going to be a fun project. All right. <laughs> yes. And uh, other news. So I heard through the grapevine that the new Vulcan ball formulation is going to be tested at the at the tournament we're going to in Dallas. I don't think it's going to be in the amateurs. It won't, we won't trickle down to the amateur ranks, but the pros will be testing a newly formulated Vulcan ball. You know, we've all seen – yeah. The Vulcan bounce by now. Uh, they go out around. The original formulation went out around very quickly. They played hard, very similar to the Dura, about the same hardness as the Dura. But instead of cracking like the Dura did, they went out around and just there was Wonky. no bounce or bounce super high mm-hmm. or bounce left or right. So uh, apparently the, the new formula is a little softer and uh, than the original and plays somewhere between that <laughs> Dura mm. and the Franklin. Like many of the most of the balls coming out these days, so I think that's on their marketing brochure. I think so. We'll see. Plays between a Dura and a Franklin, <laughs> and I don't know what the color is going to be. In, you know, the dyes that go into the ball have a big effect on the performance of the balls. So the the really bright neon balls that look great apparently don't play as well. It softens up the ball first of all. That oh. that, that really. Um, with optic green color, mm-hmm. you know, versus the duller yellows, which were the Duras. And I always wondered, I was like, why does Dura have that ugly, pale, Still, yeah. yellow color you can't really see? Well, that played into its hardness and its performance. So, yeah, apparently the the brighter the dye, the the softer the ball. So, But we non-pros are stuck with Vulcan version one. <laughs> I hope not. I, I I'll try to confirm that, but uh, it's just kind of breaking news, and I didn't get a chance to, to really drill down yeah, and, and get any data on that. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, we will be courtside when we can at the Dallas event, checking out the pros and mm-hmm. see how— And playing otherwise. Yeah, and playing some events. We've got, both got mixed and men's doubles. You didn't do singles, no, did you? No, I'm not in mixed. It's just men's. 
Oh, Paula's not coming? Nope. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought her and Sarah Jenny were coming. Um, they're doing women's doubles, sorry. Oh, okay. But I'm just playing men's doubles. Interesting. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, me and Sarah, Jenny are playing mixed, and you and I are playing men's. So. Yeah, I got to get back, so something oh, see. for me. I see. Cool, cool. Uh, that'll be fun. We're really, really looking forward to the <laughs> Dallas event, so... Uh, the whole crew is going to be there. The whole crew. I just, I just put you into the uh, deep yeah, end. I with wish the you had text that. thread. <laughs> I was enjoying my life until then. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, we started a text thread for everybody going to the event. So we've got Chris and Will and Braden and Chris's brother Isaac are all, all coming, and all of us are staying in a Airbnb. You're staying at the Marriott, I think, yep. so separate. Uh, and then. Brian from Building Pickleball mm-hmm. is coming also. So, and then I added you to that group chat today. And uh, life was so peaceful. Yeah, you've it, just then, been buzzing. Off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fish, there's officially a Will's dad meme right now, <laughs> and there will be content somehow created. I've heard right there's there. some hazing for the new guys too. So, <laughs> watch my. Back. Well, I had to go through it. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we do have – you rented a indoor court on Friday morning. Yep. Right? Yep. First half of Friday. And uh, we are going to – what's the name of the place? Dallas Indoor Pickleball? I think that's it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two courts, and we have both. Yeah. For a few yeah, hours. A good stretch there Friday morning. Yeah. And it's – well, originally it was so we can kind of get warmed up and practice, but also it's developed into we might be doing some content. So – It'll be exciting that we've already got confirmation from Matt Cox of Chorus Pick- Pickleball mm-hmm. and Brian Fitzpatrick of Graffiti. Mm-hmm. They are men's doubles partners. They play in 4.0. I didn't realize they were playing together. Yeah, they're playing in 4.0 <laughs> division. <laughs> okay. So they're coming to the indoor facility, and we'll, we'll we'll play them and shoot some footage and have a lot of fun. It's on, boys. And I'm inviting— They use your— Shapeshifter against you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just, just wait till you get Eddie's shifted. forehand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll also invite Dale from Six Zero and Doug oh, from nice. Bread and Butter. All right. Yes. Okay, boys. So let's see. I don't even care about up. the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the funnest part. Right? Exactly. The game yeah, is on. That's right. Cool. Okay. Um, anything else for let's talk battles. current events? That's yes. what we're here for. Let's dovetail into our paddles this week that we hit. So we, I received a package a few weeks ago from Pickle. This is P-I-K-K-L Pickle, not to be confused with the 17 other variations of Pickle, Can we just mostly with no vowels. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but uh, this Pickle is the one that just came out. Well, first of all, they, they sponsor Tyra Hurricane Banks and Gabe Tardio, and they're two pros. And they just came out with the new skin technology, skin technology. So the replaceable face to refurbish your grit. And they were the first to the market for that. Uh, Reload is another company that's been working on it. Nick Pachanich from uh, I, I've known Nick for a good while now. He and I were conversing way back in my early days as a paddle reviewer on on yeah on dissections and what is peel ply and what creates a texture. He's been working on this forever. He's going to be at some point releasing his version of this also. But we now have a USAP approved paddle that you can replace the skins on. So we had four paddles to test. We had the Vantage Pro 14 and 16 millimeter, and that's their elongated. I think it's like 16.4. I think it's a little bit non standard measurements. And the Hurricane Pro, which is Tyra's paddle, we had the 14 and 16 millimeter version of those. So I did run the stats and the metrics on these uh the first of all so the skins just go over the original raw carbon fiber surface so when you get these paddles you order them and they come just like any other raw carbon fiber paddle and the the performance of this in terms of spin on all these was outstanding out of the box not i'm not talking about when you put the skins on so right out of the box you get these Paddles that play that look and feel like any other raw carbon fiber paddle. This is the Vantage Pro 16, or not as the 14, sorry. And the RPMs on all these, I'll give that to you, it doesn't want to stand up on its own. Uh, so, RPMs for the Tyra Hurricane Pro. That's the other one. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
2404 for the 16 millimeter. That was on average. Holy cow. That takes the number one spot short of the Gila Gen 3 paddles. Uh, I, I got some 2400s in those as well. So you hand that over? Yeah. That's the 14, right? Yeah. This, oh, is, this is after I put, we put the skins on. So What's these, the better camera for this? Show it in yours. Yeah. And that's the Tyra. So the Tyra is a standard shape. No, 16 by 8, and the the Herc, sorry, the Vantages are the elongated ones. Mm -hmm. So the Tyra 16 got 2,400. The Tyra 14 got 2,280, so basically 2,300 RPM. The Vantage Pro 16 got 2,260, and the Vantage Pro 14 got 2,367, so an another nearly 2,400. So, man, just the... Spin on paddles is just creeping up and up and up, and it's not so much my form. You know, I'm not really doing anything different. You know, I'm sure I'm getting slightly more spin over months and months of you know hitting serves with paddles, but I think it's mostly that paddles are getting grittier. You know, PPA increased their RT on their stare at testing. You know, up to I forget the the new standards, but you can get a little steeper grit on paddles these days than you could in the past. And, and yeah, it, everything's creeping up. So the price on these, uh, very reasonable. So the Hurricane Pro sells for 160 and the Vantage Pro for 140 And that's before any kind of discounts. I'm pretty sure I have a 10% discount with them. If not, I'll, I'll get that set up. Um, the And otherwise, these are thermoformed, uh -huh. foam edge, carbon fiber face, the usual... Formula. Exactly. All okay. thermoformed, raw carbon fiber face. It's the coarser peel ply on the paddles before you put on the skins. Yeah, so the Tyra is uh, 16 by 8 advertised, and I measured it and it's coming in a little shorter than that and a little wider than that. So it's actually like 15.9 inches long and 16, sorry, 8.1 inches wide, which places that in my category in the wide body. So it does, it, you can kind of feel that it plays like, more similar to the Valer Mach 2 Forza than it does to, let's say, the Pulsar FX.R2 or the Scorpius. I was going to make Scorpius. that comparison okay. to the Valer. It, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, the, like I said, the P v Vantage Pros are a non-standard measurement. They're actually 16.3 inches long. So, you know, within that hybrid mm -hmm. length, but they're only 7.5 inches wide, which is a curiosity to me because – that falls short of the total length plus width that you can get with USAP so they're specifications. Leaving, they're leaving area on the table. They're leaving it on the table. Uh, That's too bad. Yeah. I think they could have made the paddle a little wider. What else? So swing weight. Um, we've got for the Tyra, the Hurricane Pro. Without the skin. Without the skin. Really low swing weights of 109 for the 16 yeah. and 108 for the 14. Yeah. Really fast in the hands. <laughs> yeah. Which is curious that they're so close. The 16 and 14 are only one point off for the Hurricane. For the Vantage Pro, there's a significant significant difference between the 16 and the 14 in terms of the swing weight. The 16 comes in at 121 swing weight, 14 at 112. Massive difference. I don't, I don't know what could be causing that besides the core. That's surprising. Yeah. Maybe some of the mm. layup on the surface layers. Let me see that 14. Yeah. Uh... I'll go look at their website after this. I don't know if they have ranges for their swing weights and if that's an anomaly. I would not have guessed that just in the hand. Yeah. I, I even double-checked it. And I was like, that's a really strange. Anyway, um, twist weights. So as you can imagine, the Tyra being nearly a wide body is has very good twist weight numbers. So 6.79 for the 16 and 6.6 .6 for the 14. Yeah, another interesting pattern with the Vantage is that the Vantage Pro 16, the one with the 121 swing weight, came in at a 6.64 twist weight. That's pretty darn good for such a narrow paddle. Mm -hmm. You know, you are getting the extra swing weight, so it feels a little bulkier in the hands, but the, that's what I, I think, that 16 in particular, it didn't feel as narrow as it actually is. It, it didn't twist in the hands so much. Uh, the 6.19 twist weight of the 14 millimeter um, is... You know, that's a, it's a little lower, but that's pretty good also for a, for a narrower 14 millimeter paddle. Usually that falls under six right. twist weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can talk about our 
play of these. I also did the power and pop testing. So the power on the Hurricanes was actually pretty good for shorter paddles. Uh, it came in at the 82nd percentile for the 16 and the 77th percentile for the 14. And there was a little more umph with the more elongated Vantage Pros at 85 percentile for the 16 and 80th percentile for the 14. And then for pop, uh, you can imagine the shorter Hurricanes got better pop. Pretty They're poppy. Just, yeah, easier to speed up in your hand. So the 16 Hurricane got 68 percentile and the 14 got 74th percentile the 16 uh, vantage came in more muted for pop at 60th percentile uh, and sorry 52nd percentile and 60th percentile for the 14 millimeter so kind of what all that means is that you have better hand maneuverability hand speed with the shorter wide body paddles the hurricanes and the vantage pros provide a little bit more power but at the expense of maneuverability uh, also, less pop for the elongated, more pop for the shorter ones. Spin, great out of the box. Um, so, Eddie, we, we played games with these right before we came here to record in the studio today. Uh, what are your thoughts? So, first we started with the Hurricane. Uh, I think you started with, I can't remember if you started with the 14 or 16 first. I think the 14. What are your thoughts on the 14? Hurricane? Yeah, I, I could tell that that spin was there from the get-go. I was really enjoying the drives with it. Um, you know, we were playing in a little bit of wind today, and uh, with a tailwind behind me, I was able to get top spin on and still keep that ball inbounds. Which, you know, these paddles without skins are <laughs> a great value. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the uh, benefit for cost is is there all day. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I felt the same way uh, with both the 16 and the 14. Uh, I felt like the 14 out of the box. Did benefit from some perimeter oh, weighting, yep. which I did put on. I put, uh, where is it? Yeah. Looks like two inches on each side. So two grams on each side at four and eight o'clock, uh, which shored up some of the, some of the, it wasn't so much the twisting as much as it just wasn't as responsive off of, off center as I would have liked it to be. So I think the 14 definitely needs some perimeter weighting unless you want maximum hand speed. You don't mind the, the smaller sweet spot. 16 felt good right yeah. out of the box. I yeah. could play with that. Even a little weight there might, is it would not hurt. It would not hurt. Yeah. yeah. And there's plenty of room given it's very, very low swing weight. Uh, and just a little bit. I haven't, I haven't rerun the numbers with the perimeter weighting for the twist weight, but just a little bit is going to kick that into 99th percentile. I think you know? you're right. I like the pop on it. Um, the handle's really nice. Uh, the grip on it is, for a stock grip, one of the better ones I've seen out there. It's really tacky. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, one issue with the stock grip, I I like this actually, but a lot of people don't like this ribbed stock grip or the ribbed grips. So it has like a, a band basically going going through. I actually prefer those because you, you know where you're holding it. You know, they, normally you can feel you, you prefer to hold it on one side versus the other, uh, but this one just makes it quicker when you're. It's not terribly pronounced. I mean, I've I've no. definitely played with some where it's it can be annoying, but this one is yeah a little bit more muted. Yeah, and it's very soft. People are getting good. Like Selkirk's new paddles, I feel like they have that really soft I, touch grip. This feels similar. I agree. I agree. Uh, between this and the Vantage, I would take these wide bodies. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the Vantage didn't play bad. It had. Nope. Uh, I was expecting a smaller sweet spot. The sweet spot actually was for a, a narrow paddle. I keep wanting to call it wanting to call it elongated. It's actually within the hybrid length specifications, but that narrow 7.5 inch width, I was expecting the sweet spot to be also narrow and, and it overperformed, I'd say, on the sweet spot. And uh, yeah, with a little perimeter weighting down low, so it doesn't increase the, the tw swing weight, then I think those would play even better. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I preferred the standard shape, wide body shape of the Hurricane. Yeah. So the pickle skin technology aside, yep. these are... <laughs> Good. I'd I'd probably pick one up and play with it and and do actually pretty well with it in a in a tournament. Uh, you know, if you had said this versus the Volaire, I could probably do either one. To be honest, I feel like okay. So let's that's a good point. Let's compare the Hurricane to the Volaire Mach Two Forza. The Hurricane to me was popular and that it had a little bit more power. So it's it's I would say it's an all court paddle. You know. Still skewing toward control, 
And I, I would call the Mach 2 Forza a control, control. paddle. Yeah. Squarely in the control category. But this one has enough pop and power, I'd say, to put it on the control side of the all-court. One category. reason I would pick this over the Volare in a particular circumstance would be when maneuverability is paramount. Mm. I feel like this one has a lower swing weight. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it felt more maneuverable in the hand. Yeah, I agree, especially the the 14. Um, I can look, right? I think they're they're close, but I think this one doesn't have But when beat. control is paramount, I would probably still go with the Valaire. Yeah. Yep, good call. But great paddles in and of themselves. Yeah, for sure. And then we, we tried the skins, the pickle skins. So yeah, very interesting this is a new technology. technology. I'm going to take one off so you can see it. You know, I was worried that this is going to be like putting on a screen protector and there's going to be bubbles and uh, this is going to be a nightmare. I was but impressed it, with how it went on. Yeah, it's super easy. So the skins come like in a sticker pack. No you know. bubbles. And it's about what, like about a millimeter trimmed um, inside of the edge guard. So it's, yeah. you don't have to get it exactly 100% perfect. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I only messed, I did it really quick on the court and I only messed up. One, I just barely got it over the edge guard on half of it, but it's it's I mean super easy to to fit on there, and uh, you, they're you know you can take them off, put them back on. You're just supposed to to clean the paddle surface with oh, I didn't a damp realize cloth. you could reapply it once yeah. it's been taken off. Yeah, so you can see I'm putting this back on. <laughs> That's it. Super simple. That's great. So in that sense, I think this is a, first of all. Fantastic idea. Everybody's been wanting this to be able to replace their grit. Mm -hmm. I do agree with Chris Olson's review. Uh, he reviewed the pickle skins and said, great idea. Technology is not quite there yet. I think that is spot on because especially – now, granted, you wouldn't do this normally. You wouldn't buy a new paddle, a new raw carbon fiber pickle paddle and put a skin over the top of that. But that was our perspective today. And doing that, I would say the performance dropped pretty noticeably with the skin on because it doesn't get as good of spin as yeah, the... I, to me, it took every positive attribute of this paddle and made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal but honest. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. The spin, uh -huh. uh, the pop, mm -hmm. the power, and the maneuverability all suffered, yeah. uh, in my opinion. Let's talk about spin first. Uh, I've not rerun the spin test, but I'd say there's a significant drop. I, I think everybody's going to run 1,800 RPM. So I would agree 1800 with that. 1,800 versus 2,400. Anatomy. Yeah, 2,400, to 23 to 2,400. The, 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 the original paddles are top of the top tier spin, and I just miss that. As soon as I put the... As soon as I put the skin on, I was like, oh, I'm not getting the dip. And that's yep. it's a sad John on the court when you're not getting as much spin. Secondly, it adds quite a bit. Um, it's noticeable, the weight difference, right? And it's spread across the paddle face, which is not so bad on the 14s. 16, you can definitely feel yeah. your hands slow down with the skins on. Do you have a feel for a swing weight difference? Maybe five points? Yeah, I would say that's that's being conservative if it's five or more points, I would say, for sure, with the skins on. Uh, and you're also getting some added twist weight, so that's, you know, it's helping in that regard widen the sweet spot, but there's a noticeable difference in, in hand speed. Something I don't think, I'm not sure any of the reviews I've seen or people talking about this, I don't, I'm not sure that anybody's talked about this yet, but I notice a very different feel off the face playing with the skin versus playing with the raw carbon fiber underneath. It felt like a fiberglass paddle. It felt like taking a raw carbon fiber and swap, swapping that out for a all, fiber gra all fiberglass grip paddle. That meaning that you get a lot more pop off the face. The first few drops, so it, we played with this a few games with no skins, put the skins on. The first game I got four or five pop-ups mm. immediately because the ball comes off the the face a little differently. It's just a little poppier. I'd, I'll be interested to run the the numbers in terms of power and pop, but it feels like taking your raw carbon fiber paddle and transforming it into a, a all fiberglass paddle. Did you get the same feeling? Not exactly. It, it definitely felt different in terms of that pop. I, I don't know if it's more pop, but it's definitely different pop. Yeah, I didn't have as good of touch. Yeah. with yeah, I would say so with the skins on. I would say so. But yeah. Um, 
if we took these paddles and we played with them for three months solid, and let's say the spin dropped down to fifteen hundred, the question with, then with is: with the skin or without the skin? Without the skin. Okay. And the question then is: okay, is that skin going to be a significant improvement? And yeah, I think three hundred RPM is about where you really start noticing a, a significant difference. So yeah, if you're coming from fifteen hundred RPM and you bump it up to eighteen hundred, then I think that's worth it. Question Nobody then is. That. What's that? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants what? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants uh, eighteen hundred RPM. Yeah, it's true. Everybody I mean, wants what they had out of the box, which yeah. is twenty two to twenty four hundred. Yeah, for these paddles. I think most most four point zero and above players, and even some lower players who love their spin, want more than eighteen hundred these days because most paddles have well above two thousand right. these days. So. Agree, totally agree with Chris Olson's statement that this is a great idea and it's going to be – it's going to end up in Pickle's advantage after they reformulate the skins. But at this point, yeah, it needs, it needs a little work. So what would make this a great paddle with great technology in your opinion? I think first of all, they need to produce skin-specific paddles that don't have the raw carbon fiber on them to begin with. That have, that don't have the peel ply. They just have the two of the three facing layers that are usually on a on a raw carbon fiber paddle. So you mm-hmm. have a layer of unidirectional prepreg, another layer of unidirectional prepreg, another layer of unidirectional prepreg, and then the peel ply embossing over the top. So basically, you have three layers of carbon fiber and then a layer of epoxy. If they did two layers of unidirectional prepreg, one, two, and they made their skins perform better in terms of spin. Whether or not that's actually raw carbon fiber, so another unidirectional layer with a peel ply embossing over it, or whatever this technology is, which which I did talk to the owners, and this technology is created here in the U.S. in their factories. They don't have to import it from China. And it's kind of similar to a peel ply, but it's more like engraving, mm-hmm. micro-engraving on this flexible surface. So, yeah, that way, putting the skin on, you have to put the skin on to play with it. It's not... It's not going to increase the swing weight and make the paddle heavier. So, so it plays out of the box exactly like it would following replacement of a skin. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's completely consistent. It doesn't change anything about the paddle to right. basically put on a new skin. I think that is how this is going to work. It's going to optimize its performance, and it's going to make this a really viable yeah. technology. And one also that, that either – most paddle companies are going to be using themselves or maybe even a you know pickle and reload when that's out can work with other paddle companies to produce that's the dream yeah produce skins for those companies um yeah and secondly obviously it needs to have much better spin you know another 400 rpm on these pickle skins. And well, I would say performance-wise, if they can make this skin technology perform as this does out of the box without skins, then exactly. they're on to a winner. They're, oh, they'll yeah. sell a ton of them. 100%. And I th- what are they, 20, 20 bucks for the replacement skins? Something along those lines. That's very that. reasonable. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Put me on a subscription plan. And I do like these guys a lot. I, I talk to the owners, and, and they're both – good people and and you know they they're also very honest they're like yeah gabe and and tyra are not playing with the skins because they don't spin enough for them you know mm-hmm. at the elite level where they need that extra 300 400 rpm so they're not out there trying to say oh you know our pros are playing with these and you should too you know they they put this out it's it works well in terms of its application and the idea is perfect it just needs some adjustment yep agreed yeah, any, any other thoughts on, on these paddles? No, I think we've covered it, John. I would totally recommend these paddles. You know, uh, I wouldn't get the, spin, the skins right away, obviously. But for the price and the performance of the paddles, without the skins, 100%. It recommended. doesn't come with any skins? It, it, no. It, well, that, that's a good question. I think you have to buy the skins extra. Um, oh, okay. But, I yeah. I thought it came with at least one set. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, you buy the, the paddles perform great, and then if you end up using it for months and months and months, and yeah, the the spin is the face is super smooth. You lost most of your spin, then yeah, consider the the skins, and maybe by that point, they'll have a newly formulated skin that right on. better. Right on. Well, let's move on, shall we, to 
Q&A this week. We have a question. You want to read it? Yeah, sure. This one comes from uh, Sesame Sprinkles <laughs> from, I, like uh, I guess, our last podcast, although you've had a couple of videos since then. Yeah, but from last week's podcast. On the Shogun and uh, the Willinator, mm. right? Yeah. Did, you pulled this one. I can't remember which video it's from. Uh, this one's from our last podcast. Okay. Right. So from Sesame Sprinkles, does having a heavier handle, so using a heavier hesicore, for example, or a thicker overgrip, contribute to faster hand speed more than adding weight towards the lower, the question says lower tape of the paddle. I assume that means kind of on that the bottom corners of the paddle face. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, are, your are question. Are you reading that in a different way? I read it in a okay. different way. So I was thinking so having a heavier handle, using a heavier hesicore, thicker overgrip, contribute to faster hand speed more than adding weight towards the... Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. So he's asking, adding weight to the handle, does yeah, that contribute s- to hand speed here more? here or here. Right. Is that... Versus here. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. And... That's a, a timely question because I've mentioned several times about the hand speed index that we're, we're developing with Brian mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick from Graffiti. Uh, we're in the stage now where I am testing a, a new version of his formula uh, to to see how viable it is and see if my impressions of a paddle's performance match what he's getting with these really advanced formulas. So again, the hand speed index is... Brian from Graffiti calculated in watts the exact energy required to flip a paddle 180 degrees from here to here. So where it gets tricky and where we where he started tweaking the calculation is it's a lot different to flip the paddle this way with your wrist, right? That kind of flip is very different than using your, your elbow as a pivot and going like this, right? This requires a lot of different force than this. So the original calculation was this, mostly a wrist movement. And in that wrist movement, adding weight to the base of the handle does increase your hand speed Hmm. significantly. So it's basically like a trebuchet effect where you get weight here that offsets and it, I think like the second part of that movement, it actually accelerates. But it doesn't increase this hand speed when you're moving the paddle in a larger arc with your elbow or your shoulder, right? Um, so that's an important distinction to make because that it will be the difference between like flicks. You know, you, you're going to be adding weight to the base of the handle is going to presumably increase your pop levels with flicks and wristy movements, but not so much with shoulder movements and, and larger elbow movements. Uh, so, so if you think of the whole system as uh, a lever of sorts, mm-hmm. that your, your fulcrum is basically moving from somewhere here mm-hmm. to somewhere closer to here. Right. So not the fulcrum on the paddle, but, yeah, the fulcrum of your of the actual, system. Of, yeah, of that 180-degree arc. Right. right. Yeah. So, um, yes. So it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. Uh, so for wristy movements, yes, you do increase your hand speed by adding weight to the handle, but for – Larger movements with your shoulder or elbow, it does not help to, it does not increase your hand speed. Uh, But yes, so the question is a little more convoluted in the sense that he's asking, you know, does it, does it increase your hand speed here versus here? And it depends on where you put the tape here, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you move it up too much and and increase the swing weight, then hundred percent it's going to, uh, hinder your hand speed and maneuverability versus adding it down here. So kind of a rule of thumb that we both use, we've talked about this on the podcast before, is to figure out where your balance point is on the paddle. So you can you can actually do this at home. We have a fancy machine to, to calculate the balance points. So the balance point is the centimeters from the base of the paddle where the paddle actually mm, that balances pretty high, actually. on your finger. This is high, yeah. So... That would be the balance point. So you can find the balance point where it balances on your finger. Put like a little chalk mark there and uh, put your lead tape or any perimeter tape below that to minimize the swing weight increase that you're going to get with the lead tape. Now, most of the time that's going to be from here down, right? And 
part of the issue with that is is that you only got like an inch of space to work with at right. the widest part of the paddle. And adding tape at the widest part of the paddle is where you're going to get the benefits in terms of increasing the swing twist. weight. Yeah. So twist sorry, weight. twist weight. Yes. And um, so there's lots of things to consider, but in short, the um, shortest answer to his question is that yes, adding weight to the handle does increase maneuverability and hand speed more than up on the body of the paddle. But there are considerations to both. Yeah. Right. And we have found some increase in stability as well with that that base weight with the grip technology as well as other paddles that have incorporated that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was there was a weird – so you were having issues with the 30-gram cap of the elongated grip paddle finding it, – it, it became imbalanced for you, I think. You're having issues – finding the power, right? Yeah, there was a, a weird like decrease in power, like you said, but uh, there was an increase in kind of that vertical stability of the paddle, not mm-hmm. so much in the twist weight. Yeah. And I guess that intuitively makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, Grip also sent us their wide body or standard version paddle, and that's that 30-gram cap on the base of that worked much better for, for both of us. Yeah. And I noticed, I noticed better hand speed for that, better pop, and even a, a little more power, and but adding adding weight anywhere on the handle or the base is going to do nothing for the twist weight. Right. It's just going to lower the balance point. Maybe provide some vibration perks. You know, because you're getting less less vibration through the paddle. It's being absorbed through that extra weight. Uh, but I love that the paddle technology is such in its infancy right now that we don't really know what adding weight to the handle does for the paddle. We're just kind of figuring it out right now. And and uh, I think that hand speed index is, is – we're learning a lot from that in terms of, yes, it's going to be very beneficial to add weight here at the base for wristy movements like this, mm-hmm. but not so much for larger Those movements like that. Yeah. Drives. Yeah. Now, John, I've seen people add weight kind of in this area here mm-hmm. up to here. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, this is going to do a little bit for twist weight. Mm-hmm. What what would be the point of putting any weight here? It also lowers the balance point a little bit, not yeah. as effective as adding it to the handle, right. but uh, and it provides a little bit of that more plow through. Just adding weight to a, a paddle in general provides a bit more plow through, so that it doesn't feel like the paddle is getting pushed around by the ball when you add weight to it. Um, and yeah, it's just just dropping that that balance point a bit. It's gotcha. just going to play a little bit differently. All right, great question. That's where Ben John puts his, his lead tape. He starts right above the grip and brings it up to about halfway. Yeah, it, it, it's really, for me, paddle dependent. It's not going to be the same place in every on every paddle. Right. Um, and some of it is dependent on how much weight you can work with. Some paddles are just heavy to begin with. They have a high swing weight. For me, not a lot I can do with that. Right, right. That's something we should experiment is take a paddle with a high swing weight like the Willinator on the wall here and see what happens when you add lead tape to the handle. You know, does does lowering the balance point of that, it, that thing does feel pretty head heavy and the balance point it is does. pretty high on it right. because it is flared. To me, that the the classic iconic flare of the six zero shape mm-hmm. that they had on the hybrid shape didn't work as well on the elongated shape because it did push the sweet spot up a bit and made it more head heavy. Well, this is even more exaggerated than the normal six zero. It is. Flare, You're right. right. You're right. It goes for like, I think half an inch out, which the, yeah. the other one it's was pretty only dramatic. 0.2 inches or so. But uh, that's not to say that that's not a good paddle. Like Isaac, Chris's brother really loves that paddle because he's, he plays with higher swing weights and enjoys the the plow through he gets with that. It's just I've gotten more accustomed to a standard shape paddle. I've been playing yeah. with the Colin Johns and more recently a hybrid shape with uh, the the chorus shape shifter. And uh, yeah, just like a, a, a lighter swing weight paddle uh, at this point. But anyway, uh, adding w- weight to the base of the handle there, dropping that balance point, even though it's increasing the overall static weight, might actually make that. Uh, play quite a bit differently. I like this paddle. Do you? I, you know, it's it's not terribly maneuverable, mm-hmm. but um, if I can get two hands on it, even at the kitchen line, yeah. and have that assist in that maneuverability aspect, yeah. I, I play really well with it. It does feel good when it you get a, get a good hit on uh-huh. it. It just, yeah. 
All right, so the next question is from Eddie K. Okay. I think you know him. What <laughs> paddles, John, will you be bringing to Dallas PPA? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been playing with the core shapeshifter. I've been drilling with it, and I've been playing rec games with it, and I intend to use that as my primary paddle for, All the, right. for the Dallas PPA at least. Uh, and uh, so I've got that. I'm still going to bring the Colin Johns, the prototype, the alpha version of their Gen 3. Uh, and um, my third paddle is going to be, boy, I haven't decided on my third paddle yet. But I will bring three. Okay. Yeah. So, Eddie, you, what are you bringing? Well, before we get to me, any adjustments to any of those paddles? Um, how do you set those up? Uh-huh. So, or how the, will you be setting them up? The shapeshifter comes really well balanced out of the box. It, it has... I forget the stock swing weight, but it's not super low. And the twist weight is, is really good for the specs of that paddle. But I did add two grams of tungsten tape at four and eight just right. to shore up a little mm -hmm. bit of twisting and just to make it a little more solid and more more forgiving overall and widen that sweet spot. So that one, yeah, I have two grams. Uh, same for the Colin Johns. Uh, I haven't played with that in a while, but I did have two or three grams at four and eight. Okay. And my, I always over 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 wrap the grip with a yep. over wrap. So I use the the Onyx Super Grab. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's my favorite over wrap. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Well, I was planning to bring the Yola, but I've decided not to. Okay. Um, I just don't want to deal with the the hassle of right. you know this whole delisting and relisting potentially, and so. I don't want to deal with it, and so I'm I'm leaving that one at home. I too am bringing the core shapeshifter. Oh, uh, you know I've been playing with that one on, uh, really since it was released uh -huh. with great success. Um, I have found I don't know if you've taken off the stock grip yet, but the stock grip is pretty spongy, and if you mm -hmm. take it off um, underneath that, you know how they build up the handle. Mm -hmm. That part is also kind of spongy. Okay. Uh, and so I have taken off the stock grip, and I've just used the Yonix Super Grab, okay. uh, very tightly wrapped, because mm -hmm. I don't really care for that sponginess. So uh, the tighter I can wrap it, the less it feels um, sort of forgiving. I don't want forgiving. I want it very kind of firm. Right. So I have three layers of overwrap on okay. mine. But without the stock grip, it's it's actually uh, about where I like it in That's terms of... That's neat. Yeah. So you took this stock grip off entirely and then put three over, over grips yeah, on. Very tightly wrapped, though. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it, it's different. Um, I didn't expect there to be kind of a, a sponginess to that mm -hmm. um, that build up right. layer. I don't have the paddle with me, but it's another one of the stock grips that is ribbed. And I know a lot of people don't like that. That one is pretty pronounced in yeah. terms of its feel. Yeah. Like I said, I do like the ribbing. I, did, I could do with, it, with or without with or without it, but it doesn't bother me, and sometimes I do enjoy it. But, yeah, I, I, I do notice that this grip is spongy. I don't mind it. I, like, I kind of like a softer grip. But, yeah, I'll have to hit, it, hit with yours a few times. Are sure. you maining that paddle? What's that? You're going to play with that as your main? Uh, we'll see on the day of. The okay. other one is pretty different. It's the Hirache uh, Kevlar 16-millimeter. Uh-huh. You can tell me later what, what the actual model name is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that'll be my, my second paddle. Fantastic. I, I figured out just now what my third's going to be, and it's in my bag already. Okay. So it's the, the Sword and Shield J2K. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. And I've been playing with that to test it, and the more I play with it, the more, more I like it. Well, you've been playing really well with any paddle you can get your hands on, uh, so I don't <laughs> think it matters. That, let's hope that stays <laughs> while we're in the tournament. <laughs> don't get the yips. If we get to play, we'll see if the weather holds out. Oh, God, yeah. It's supposed to rain yeah. Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. It might rain the whole week. Uh, yeah. That would be a bummer. Yeah. But those are my two paddles. Really excited for them. And that's it for the questions. That's all for the questions. And we've got no gear deep dive this week, although I did see you respond to a question about the Kineon Move Plus. So yeah. that's the red light therapy device that, that uh, I tried out, and I've been using it and loving it. It's been helping out a ton with, you know, knee issues and, and, and elbow issues. And it's like I mentioned in a few podcasts ago when we were talking about it, what it feels like, it's, it's a subtle like improvement in your ability to rehabilitate. Yeah. 
and heal. But it feels like turning back the clock 10 or 20 years, like I, I used to get an injury and I'd, I'd be gone in a week. Now I get an injury and it's around three months later. And that tends, to, it feels like, you know, when you had an faster. injury, how long do you feel like it was until you felt some benefit? With using the Kineon? Yes. I definitely, so I looked at the peer reviewed literature before I even tried it. And most of the literature on joint pain, joint issues, and injury rehabilitation showed significant improvements within 10 days. So that was my benchmark. I, I started a, a journal and I would, you know, judge my pain levels from one to 10 yeah. each day. Yeah. And I did see a significant, I started noticing it. I wouldn't say significant. I started noticing an improvement in the pain levels after about a week and definitely by day 10. And then after two weeks, uh, significant improvement. And then after a month, like my right knee now feels almost new. And, and before I, I could, I was suffering quite a bit. Yeah. So a couple of weeks, 10 days. 10 days for a noticeable improvement, um, a month for sure for, for significant improvements. Yeah. So you bought one. I did. Yeah, you bought one on your own dime. You used, used my own money. Yep. Use the discount used, code. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, but you've been using it now for how long? For about three weeks now, I think. Okay. And they have a, a month you know, day return trial. day re, return policy, right? right. Yeah, trial. I'm not going to return it. Okay. I'm going to keep it. Okay. Uh, because I, too, have seen... Um, I would say significant benefit. Uh, so I was using it on tennis elbow. Uh-huh. I have shoulder problems from a long-standing uh, labrum issue mm-hmm. uh, from when, uh, geez, my son was a kid, so it was 20 years ago. Uh, and then I have a kind of Achilles tendonitis in both sides. Mm-hmm. So what I, what I did is I did my arm for 20 minutes, shoulder for 20 minutes, and then I just did one of my feet kind of as a control, leaving okay. the other one untouched. Really? That's, that's a good idea. So um, elbow is now, I would say, close to 100% gone. Uh, the shoulder, I would say uh, 70% benefit. Okay. Uh, and then I put it on my right, and I did not do my left. My left is uh, still in terrible shape. Uh, I would say of the three areas, uh-huh. um, least effective on my Achilles tendon, but still I would say 40% benefit there. And I'm not okay. sure what the difference is, whether it's uh, you know, less soft tissue there than in other places up here. But right. um, it was interesting, though, that, um, that it's not all the same everywhere. That's the same pattern I noticed, too. So the, oh, yeah? the larger okay. joints, like it worked best on my knee and elbow. Those two joints in particular, the pain was went away very quickly and it returned to like nearly 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a little bit of shoulder issues uh, that improved, but not quite as, as quickly, I'd say, as my knee and elbow. I had a tricep injury for a while, and it happened when I was hitting a hard overhead. Mm-hmm. And man, for a couple of weeks, I just felt it getting worse and worse. I was like, oh, no, I was going to – that thing cleared up. I don't feel it. Any pain at all. Amazing. I cleared up within two weeks. It was totally gone. So that was the fastest. And then, yeah, I had I have issues in my feet, and I've been getting cortisone shots. Uh, it's just kind of some really tenderness on the pad of my f- right foot, on, on the f- side of my foot, on my left foot, and it's just inflammation, right? It's like incipient arthritis, yeah. basically. Yeah. And it's, it's working on those, but much slower, right? I'd say that, yeah, I think I think – maybe 40% better after a month of solid use, which, you know, that alone, I would, I would buy this device for, even if it was only 40% effective, but given that Honestly, if it, just to get rid of my tennis elbow, it's uh-huh. probably worth the, I think it's down to 350, 375 oh, I have now. A sale? Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Um, I can also report, unfortunately, that it's not yet growing hair. <laughs> It's not growing hair? No. Was <laughs> that a side effect? I don't know. It's just, wouldn't that be weird if you just had furry yeah, elbows? Band of hair. Put it on top of my little <laughs> that's right. receding hair. Oh, line. that's right. There, there are benefits. Yeah. I don't know. This I, one, I haven't uh, done it consistently. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one's not advised to be used on the face because of the, the lasers you yeah. get in your eye. Yeah. But, yeah, really good, good device. I'm going to do a review of it okay. for sure. Uh, and. You know, it's it's not uh, – it may not be for every body part, for every person, but right. for um, the few areas that I have used it on, it's it's been very helpful. It, the, <laughs> the 
the band that holds the the lights in place mm-hmm. is a pain to mm. use. Yeah, to cinch <laughs> up and yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could it's, be improved. It's kind of, I guess, marketed to be a kind of a one band fits all body mm-hmm. parts and it ends up being a. One band doesn't really fit any body parts, except for maybe the elbow. Yeah, it's good on my Uh, knee and elbow. It's a little tight for my knee, but yeah. But to get the shoulder is really difficult. Yeah, I unbuckle it and put it under my shirt, where it just drapes over the shoulder. Yeah, I can continue working. That works well. But feet, my feet are the hardest part. To I had to like put it under my feet, unbuckle it, and then just. It's really bizarre to try and like to get the heel area and. You you know, it would be ideal that. They have a little charging case for them. Uh-huh. Uh, it comes in a, like a carry case and then a, a charging port that fits inside the carrying case. If you take the charging port out, it's like the lights are stacked right next to each other. Right. But you can't turn them on while they're charging. Right. But if you could just press that button and turn them on in that charging port, then it's like it's a block of those lights and you could put it exactly where you need. It'd, That's it'd kind of what them. I've done with a, like a just a – band or a sleeve that I have. Oh, okay. So I have that and I just kind of tuck them in there oh, where, where I position yeah. them right exactly where I want them. And they're like right next to each other yeah. versus the band they give you, which is like right. two inches apart. Anyway, it's yeah. a little thing. But, but uh, if, if they turned on in that charging port, then that'd be perfect for my feet. I just put it, just put, put my foot, foot right on, on top it. of it. Yeah. Yeah. But except it's, oh yeah, the, they, they're, they do face up, don't yeah. they, the lights? Yeah, they do. That's right. And the shipping of this company is terrible. Is it? I think it took 10 days. Oh, really? Okay. It's not Amazon, shipping. that's for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from, but it was pretty slow. Yeah. The person I talked to is in England, so maybe it is coming from Oh, that could be. Source from overseas, I'm not sure. That could be. I'm curious to see where this technology goes next. Yeah. Because this is uh, kind of burgeoning tech, right? It's, right? it's definitely not in the in the mainstream, so. But there's a lot of scientific um Evidence that it does help, and if you listen to the Andrew Huberman podcast, mm. he speaks very highly of red light therapy, and not not like the red light therapy you get in the infrared saunas. It, that's different. This is much more localized, yes. and this is the first device to actually use lasers. There's, there's been a lot of people using the red light therapy with LED lights for wrinkles and that sort of stuff, but it doesn't. It only penetrates the epidermis. The lasers penetrate into your deep into your tissue and that's what's causing your mitochondria and your cells to to heal faster than uh than normal so yeah i too as a a, i tend to be skeptical in general Mm -hmm. um you know we've talked a little bit about this before i i don't like to read reviews of things before i personally get my hands on it because i want to make up my own mind as to how something works i will read research but i hold off on reviews until after i've formed an opinion and then i Think, okay, well, what other opinions are there out there? That What have I missed? Right. But at, at least initially, I like to form my own thoughts. Right. And in this one, it's... Well, good to hear that... Working. Good to hear that you're having the same experience as I am. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Well, so we did have some deep dive gear talk to talk about. <laughs> but that's, that's everything on our agenda. Do you want to talk about anything else, Eddie? Looking forward to uh, a couple of days hanging out with you and the guys and... Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing the good folks of Dallas, Texas. Yes. I think it's my third time there in the last year. Yeah. I've been going to, to Dallas a few times also. It seems like Dallas and Vegas are like two <laughs> frequently visited pickleball venues. Yeah. For me anyway. I went to grad school in Dallas. That's where I got my PhD. I, I had no SMU idea. in Dallas. Okay. And I really enjoyed that. There's like an island of the university and surrounding area that's just really cool. So you know where all in. the good restaurants are. Yes, uh, Two Sisters Restaurant and just south of the university. Michelle and I went there when we were in Dallas last year. That's one of the best restaurants I've ever been to. What, it's what like in the New York the, Times level, you know, review. What kind of it's, fare is that? It's uh, marketed as, I think it's like Americana, cosmopolitan. So it's just a mixture of like French, Italian, and okay. American influences. Yeah, Sounds pricey. It's pricey, but, you know, it's one of the few meals I'm happy to pay a couple hundred dollars for, for two people. That's very generous of you, John, since your <laughs> wife's not coming on this trip. I really Honestly, appreciate it. Honestly, we should take, we should take, well, we should take Doug and, and Dale out and see if they want to go eat at a fancy restaurant. All right. I'm not used to, like, cloth napkins and all that mm-hmm. and utensils. Yes. <laughs> And Doug will be on his best behavior. <laughs> Whatever that <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> Napkin tucked into his shirt. Good times, Eddie. Yep. All right. Thank well, you, John. Another podcast. 
the next podcast we will be shooting will be in Dallas with a few other Ooh. paddle reviewers. So we are going to sit down. Hopefully, hopefully we have enough microphones for the five of us to sit down. Maybe even Brian will join us. That would be cool. Let's do six people in the podcast. Oh my goodness, that's going to be a technological. <laughs> mess <laughs> what that's be. I have a hard enough time with three cameras. And... I say we put Braden in charge. He yes. seems to have his stuff together. He can do it all with one phone. It's just a phone. <laughs> He's going to pass the phone around and we just each talk into the phone and video ourselves. Oh, that sounds good. All right, Eddie. Well, thanks so much. See you soon. Yep. See you.